Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, we have scheduled four series, series part on uh, presenting to you uh, 10 Hong Kong potential value stocks, which we have shortlisted. Uh, the scheduled uh, dates will be uh, this Tuesday. Uh, this is the first series uh, from 1 to 1.30. And then next week, next Tuesday, will be our series, uh, second series, uh, also from 1 to 1.30. And the first series will be uh, held on the 6th of June. Uh, the, uh, that is uh, Thursday afternoon, also from 1 to 1.30. And then the fourth series will be held on the 13th of June. Uh, from 1 p.m. to 1.30. So uh, do uh, mark them down on your diary and do join us, uh, join all the four uh, series part to uh, have uh, 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 to understand or to uh, share with us these uh, 10 Hong Kong potential value stocks. So uh, for the this series and the next uh, webinar, uh, we'll present to you two companies, Hong Kong companies each. And then in the third and fourth um, series part, we'll uh, present to you three companies each. So altogether, we have uh, picked, uh, shortlisted 10 companies uh, for our presentation. Uh, the other company we had uh, chosen uh, uh, with uh, a potential value in Hong Kong is Wang Wang, uh, uh, one want. Wang Wang. Uh, the company was established in China in 1992 and was listed on the Singapore Stock Exchange in 1996, but it was subsequently delisted in September 2007. It was then relisted, this time on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange in 2008. So Singapore investors may uh, also be familiar with uh, One Want, which had uh, once been listed uh, in Singapore. Wong Wong is engaged in the manufacturing distribution and sale of rice crackers. Wang Wang Xian Bei, a uh, 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 very popular snack uh, of the comp uh, uh, sold by the company, and also they uh, the, the offer da da uh, dairy products uh, and uh, beverages. Wang Zai Niu Nai, Wong Wong Milk, uh, uh, snack foods and other products. While most of its operations are primarily located in China, it also exports to the US, Canada, Southeast Asia, and Europe. Okay. Uh, in the first half uh, ending uh, end of September 2023, uh, its revenue increased 3.91% uh, year on year to 12.5 billion Hong Kong dollar. Operating profit, uh, saw double-digit growth, uh, grew by 18.34% to 2.556 billion Hong Kong dollars. And operating profit margin uh, increased by 3.6% to 20.44%. Net profit increased by 8.53% to 1.888 billion Hong Kong dollars. And net profit margin was 15.05%. Uh, earning per share was 0. Uh, uh, one six Hong Kong dollars, sixteen Hong Kong cents. ROE also uh, saw double digit ROE, uh, close to twelve percent ROE uh, return on equity. Return on asset was six point five percent. Okay. Uh, revenue structure. Uh, uh, here we uh, uh, break down into different uh, products, namely dairy products and beverages, snack foods, rice crackers and other products. You can see uh, dairy products uh, account for 54%, half of its uh, uh, revenue. And then uh, snack foods account for 27%, and uh, rice crackers account for 18%, and other pro pro uh, products only account for 1%. So over the last few years, uh, this breakdown was quite remain stable with uh, dairy products and beverages accounting for around 50 or slightly more than 50%, and uh, snack foods accounting for uh, less than 30%, and uh, uh, rice crackers accounting for uh, around uh, 20%, uh, 
uh, and the cross profit margin uh, because of um, uh, uh, competition, uh, admittedly competition in China, the cross profit margin uh, and also the increase in raw material costs. So in 2021 and 2022, uh, the gross profit margin has uh, saw a, a decline uh, from uh, 48% to uh, around 44%. But since 2022, uh, it saw a rebound in the gross profit margin to between 45% to 46%. Uh, this is the uh, gross uh, gross profit margin. Okay, uh, now uh, raw material price changes affect the gross profit margin. As I mentioned earlier, rice for rice crackers, the gross profit margin uh, for uh, the interim uh, two hundred two four financial year was forty three point eight percent, up uh, six point six percent year on year. This was mainly attributable to the decrease in palm oil caused by approximately 30% in the uh, uh, in, in the uh, first six months of uh, 2024 financial year. The gross profit margin uh, for dairy products and beverages uh, was slightly higher than that of the rice crackers, uh, amount, uh, amounting to 47.3%, up 2% year on year. This was mainly due to the decrease in the unit cost of packaging materials, such as tin plate and raw paper by a high single digit to meet tin percentage. So for rice crackers, it benefit from the drop in palm oil price. Uh, for dairy products and beverages, it benefit from the decrease in uh, packaging uh, material costs. Okay, uh, the gross profit margin for snack food was 43%, okay? This was mainly, the, the rise in uh, prof gross profit margin was mainly due to the increase in the unit cost of sugar and gelatin by a high teen percentage and 13% uh, respectively. Uh, gelatin saw a, 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 a rather sharp rise uh, in the first half of uh, financial year 2024. However, it was partially offset uh, by uh, the benefit of other cost reduction. So the company uh, 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 did well in cost reduction and uh, pass, pa, uh, partially offset the rise in sugar cost and gelatin cost. Okay, uh, so this is the crude palm oil prices movement. I think uh, you must be uh, quite familiar with uh, pa uh, palm oil price movement. Uh, drier El Nino years weigh on palm oil use. So uh, it's affected by uh, weather. Uh, so I will skip this part, okay. Uh, 2024 projection, a new update from the World Meteorological Organization, WMO, says there is about a 60% chance of El Nino persisting during March to May and an 80% chance of neutral conditions, neither El, uh, El Nino or La Nina in April to June. And there is a chance of La Nina developing later in the year, but the odds are currently uncertain. Okay, so this will uh, impact uh, the palm oil price. Um, in, uh, although we notice there's intensive competition in uh, in uh, the mark in in the market, uh, one one is uh, operating in. Uh, yet it benefits it uh, consistently enhances competitive uh, competitiveness by continuous innovation. Okay, and the snack market uh, in China has a huge potential uh, of uh, a huge potential growth potential. The market size of net food industry in China is expected to reach 1.15 trillion yuan in 2026. Okay. Uh, however, on the other hand, fierce competition due to lack of diversity and innovation. Data shows that the uh, CR4 of domestic snacks is only 9.7%, while the figures in the United States and Japan are as high as 
38% and 23.8% uh, respectively. So it's still very fragmented. The market is still very rather fragmented compared to um, US and Japan. Um, differentiated brand positioning and new products. Uh, this is the strategy adopted by OneWant. The company launched differentiated sub-brands targeting different consumer groups for mothers, babies, toddlers, the elderly, women, and fitness enthusiasts. Uh, and leveraging on its R&D capability, the company has continued to introduce innovative products and enrich new flavors. Example, Dong uh, uh, double layer QQ gummies, Shuang Cheng QQ Tang. Uh, these are uh, innovative products launched by the company. Okay. Um, while the, the company is expanding overseas sales channel, uh, its operational performance uh, saw some stagflation, uh, stagflation in operation, uh, operational uh, performance. Uh, all product lines still contribute the most to the company's revenue. So uh, the company needs a transitional period or trans needs to transform. Uh, replace, need to replace old product lines with new and innovative product lines. And uh, at the moment, it may be one risk, uh, potential risk is hard to find next growth point. Uh, yet overseas business achieve a high teen revenue growth rate uh, in the first half of, uh, it should be 2024 financial year. Uh, for instance, the Vietnam plant has begun to undertake overseas orders. So uh, yes, uh, huge growth percent potential in uh, ASEAN. Uh, five overseas subsidiaries in Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia, Germany, and North America have been put into operation and continue to explore the localized business model. Okay. You can see the share price, uh, uh, similar to uh, Chow Tai Fu, it also underperformed the Hang Seng Index. It was still down uh, also by around 5% uh, compared to last year, end of last year, okay? And it's also trading at uh, below minus one uh, standard deviation. The fair value uh, would uh, rate the company as 14.6 uh, Hong Kong dollars. Currently is uh, around uh, below $12. So it's uh, uh, slightly below minus one uh, standard deviation. So the target price would be uh, in the long run. Uh, we uh, view that these un two undervalued companies would be able to uh, see their uh, valuation uh, uh, re, uh, 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 go, uh, recovering to the fair value. Uh, uh, the, because current peer group average PE is 17 times. And uh, now at 14.625 uh, uh, is uh, the still below uh, the current peer group average PE. Okay, so uh, that's our, my, our presentation on the two uh, value stocks we picked for the first series, namely Chow Tai Fook and um, Won Won. Okay.